Hi again, welcome to another video and in front of us today we have a still TS410 cutoff saw. I picked this up with two other cutoff saws a little while back and I could never try this one because the recoil was broken. I now have a new recoil on it so I'm going to try and start it on carb spray to see if we have spark and see if it runs at all and then I'll strip it down, clean it up and give it a good um, service and make sure everything is all good. So yeah, we'll get on with that now. So We'll just see if it's does anything. Oh, fired. So now I've got this steel cut off saw at home. Uh, it's a steel TS410, the one you've just seen start up. Um, on carb spray so what i'm going to do now i've actually undone the bolts of that cover already i'm going to get that cover off i'm going to take the carburetor off because i'm sure that will need a clean out and i want to check in the exhaust and in through the carburetor port as well just to see what the piston looks like so what i'll do off camera i'll just take that off i think there's a couple of things just connecting to do with the throttle and then i'll show you when i'm in where the carburetor is so I've got the top cover off. All what was really holding it, apart from the bolts, was that throttle rod and the wires that went to the coil. So I've took them off. And since then, I've took a cover off there and took a spark plug out. So now we're to where the carburetor is. Um, it's very, very dusty, this machine, you know, because there are round bricks and stone and that. So they generate a lot of dust. And if that gets sucked into the engine then the bore will be damaged. But let's hope that hasn't happened. And one thing can sort of tell me um, if that has happened will be the condition of that air filter. So we'll just, I have unbolted that, but we'll just pull that off now. So we'll pull this air filter cover off and the air filter. And to be honest, pre filter looks clean. There's no dust on there. What's that like? A bit dusty, but not terrible. So. Hopefully this is a decent maintenance over the years and it saved the engine from getting any damage. But we still have to have a look. We've still got to get to that stage to have a look to really make sure. So I think I'm going to get the carburetor off now. Uh, I can see a bolt there that's got to come out. Uh, yeah, I'll get the bolts out and then I'll be back with you when we can get that off there. So I've been trying to get this apart and I've been working on the back end there, but I seem to got as far as I can get I can't see any more bolts there probably are some more hidden bolts at the back but what I want to do is get the cutter part off and I've got the cover off so I think now I should be able to get that belt off and then separate that piece and then I'll be able to get to the exhaust then because that's in the way of the exhaust there uh, but yeah it's quite a lot on this quite a compact machine uh, the moment I need to really push it back further. If I can get that belt off first, I'll see if I can do that. The belt looks in good condition. So let's see if we can just get that out of there. We can. So the belt is off. Because it's like on a, a tensioner there. I'm not quite sure how you release that. I'm just going to get a socket on there and I'll see what happens I'm not really quite sure how that tensioner works but if I can get it off I'll have a look at it afterwards but there's some things holding it on still uh, and I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't want everything to go flying out. I wonder if I just undo that there and take that whole tension a bit off. I think that is the best way to get it out of the way altogether. Just there. So yeah, we'll have a look at that later on when we put it back together. We'll just screw them back in there at the moment. And I will probably just have to disconnect this water piece at the bottom, just down there. But I would imagine this should come off now. It's caught on the exhaust. Um, ah, I've done it now. 
that's off. I just got disconnected off the water bit. I'll do that off camera and I'll be back with you. So now the exhaust is undone, I'll get that off. Looks fairly clean behind there. It's just where the dust can't get to really. Um, so I'll have a look in there. The back of the book, oh, it looks really good. On that side of the piston, it looks really, really good. And the other side of the bore looks really good. Um, I've got to take the carburetor off to check a piston on the other side, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I think I've got lucky on this one. I'll try to show you in there. There you go, it's really good. Actually looks like nearly like new. So yeah, the filter looks like it's been doing its job because this is a very, very dusty machine, but I think we got lucky here. So I'm really pleased with the condition of the piston on the exhaust side. And usually that's the side that does get more damage. So I'm quite hopeful that this side will be just as good. Uh, but you've got to think about it. Um, the air filter, that'll take in the air and that will go through the carburetor. So it could drag through there first. But how good that side is, I think that side will be okay. I've got to try and work out how to get the carburetor off. It's quite um stuck in there there's a lot of stuff that looks like it needs to come off so i'm gonna just work on that off camera and i'll be back with you when we're ready to take the carb off so i've been battling with this a little bit but now i've managed to separate the engine from the well fuel tank and the handle and everything so um I'm not sure whether it's the right way to do it or not but it seems to have worked and i can get to where i need to get to now so all of this it's got to be cleaned up. The carburetor's on there. I will take that off and um, clean it out and give it a new diaphragm and gasket. Um, but at the moment, I'm going to have a look in there and see what the piston's like from this side. If you can see in there, it's just as good on the carburetor side. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So now I know both sides of the piston are good. Um, there's no plan to crank. So I know that the core of the machine is good. It had spark because we tried it up the unit and it fired on carb spray. So all I've really got to do with that part is just give it a clean up, get the dust out, give it a clean up and that should be good to go. So now I'm going to take the carburetor off from, let's call it the cradle part. Um, and that bit of linkage, I think just pops out of there. Should come out though, it's got a bit loose in there, but am I? <laughs> yep, we're nearly there. So that goes in like that, and then the other side just hooks in that little hole there, like that. So we'll put that with all the other bits, and I don't think there's anything apart from fuel lines to come off. So I'll get that fuel line off there. And there's one around the other side and then I think the carb will come off. It's quite a few days on now and I've been doing lots of cleaning of this um, steel TS 410 cutoff saw. It was absolutely covered in dust everywhere and I had to pick it away with a screwdriver and blow out the airline. Uh, wash it. I washed it first to get the worst off, but it's been a bit of a nightmare to be honest. But I've got it okay. I'm quite happy with how I've got it now. So I'm going to start to get it back together. I have cleaned the carburetor. That's all done. I've done a separate video of that. So I'll put a link in at the comments and also in the description. So if you want to know how to do the carburetor, clean it out and new diaphragm and gasket kit, um, pop over to that video and have a watch of that. Then the next job will be to get this back on the anti-vibe springs. One's there, there's two others, and they go through there. I've sorted all the bolts out, so I'm pretty sure I know what goes where. So off camera, I'm just gonna get that piece in because it's going to be difficult for me to show you uh, me doing that because I've got to sort of move everything around. So I'll be back with you when this part is resting on that part. So I now have that rubber piece in. I actually had to take it out from the engine and fit it in the base part first and then pull it through. It was a bit tricky, but I've done it. So now I can get the carburetor in, which fits in between there and there. So I'll just take out my blue roll I've had in there. Stop dust getting in there. 
Now I'm going to get this carburetor back on. We have three pipes to connect. One there that goes onto that one. One there goes onto that one. And one there that goes onto that plastic piece on the casing. So these might be a little bit tricky to get on, but hopefully they'll go on okay. The bottom one most likely be the hardest one. So the bottom one is on. I'm going to try and get this one on now. There is a bit of room, but not much room to try and get it on. So the two most difficult ones are on. That one isn't connected yet, but I don't need to connect that quite yet because it only goes onto there. So what I'm going to do now is put these three bolts through. One goes through there. And that will go to the top on there. And there's two to go through from under here. So I'll get them connected now. I've just got to sort of line the engine up on the anti vibration springs. The three carburetor bolts are in now, so that's sort of holding everything together along the sort of top end. Now I've located them anti-vibration springs, so I just have three bolts to go in them. There's one there. Just put them in loosely at the moment, just so everything falls into place okay. Uh, there's two around the other side. And then we have one more, which is just on top there. And I'll show you how they fit in. There's like a little cog, really. And that just fits into some sort of cutouts in there. So it locates in there like so. Like that. And then a bolt just goes through from this side. And it holds it all together. So I'll just get that one in. So now I've got this linkage to fit back in. Uh, you may not be able to see brilliantly, but it clicks in there like that. Just pushes through that little hole there. And then that pushes in there and should lock in place. Might need some pliers just to get that in place. So that didn't really want to go into there. I had to sort of use the pliers to get it in, but if you just look there, you can see it's working as it should be. So I think we're good to go there. That has slipped out a little bit, that part there, but I'll just push that back in. That's not a problem. The next job I'm gonna do is get the exhaust back on. I've already got the gasket there, like a gasket plate there. And we'll see if we can get in place, Got one through, it's going to be easier this way, and then just hold this in place and then bolt it on. So all the exhaust bolts are tight now. That one, that one, and that one down there. That's got a hole for a bolt, but I was a bit confused. The bolt didn't seem to do anything. And when I took it off, I had to take the exhaust back off again. Um, that's just a hole there and it doesn't go anywhere. You can't put a bolt in there. So I don't know why that's there, but that's how it is. So now I'm gonna get the flywheel back on. 
you didn't see me take the flywheel off, but I had to take it off to pull that bit of rubber through there. Also, it was very dusty behind there, so it was good that I took it off and blew it out the best I could. Um, so there's the key is built in there. So I'll just spin that round to where that locates. There we have it. There's the nut. And I'll just impact that up and I'll hold it on the clutch side. I've done a few things off camera. I fitted that and put that HT lead all around there where it should go. Um, I can't bolt that down yet because when I put the top cover on and the side cover on, they share the same bolts. But that is all in place. I put a bit of linkage in and that just goes down there. I'll try and show you where that goes. It's quite hard to show you, but you just can probably make out that there and that's where it goes. So then that end connects to the trigger. So now I'm gonna fit the top cover, but I can't really show you me doing that because I've got to move the machine around a lot. It's not exactly that hard. It's just sort of a bit fiddly getting it into place. You've got the bolt holes there and that wire there. So I've got to sort of feed the wire around through there, down there, well, there's two um, plugs that fit on the coil. So I'll get that fitted and I've got to make sure that that bit of linkage is going through there. As you can see, the top cover is on. So I'll just show you where that throttle linkage went in. See it there. So it's all working fine. And I have a new cover to go on top of there. So I'll just get that on. There we go because that was missing when I got the saw. Clicks in place like that. And then we have this little bolt just to go through. So get that screwed in. So that part of the saw is more or less done now. Just a couple of jobs to do. Um, off camera, I did fit a new primer bulb. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not, but yeah, I fit a new primer bulb. And underneath that cap I just fitted, that top cap, um, I did fit a new spark plug. So now I'm going to fit this new air filter set. Uh, it should be an air filter in there and a pre-filter. And I cleaned out the cover. So we'll get that fitted. So now I'm going to get the air filter set fitted in. This part has got a slit right around the side like that. And that just fits into the casing. I want to make sure you get this part right because these saws do drag in a lot of dust. So you want these filters fitting as tight as you possibly can, how they're meant to be. And that seems all good. So there we have the filter housing. There's the main filter. I'm just gonna push this in place. Just make sure it packs all in where it needs to go. Looks good to me. So we'll just get this fitted on here. Push it in place. The screws will sort of pull it in a bit as well. So I'll do the bottom ones first. Start them. So now the air filters are all in and everything's tightened up on there. I've got this side panel to go on. That goes over the flywheel side. So I'll get that bolted in place and then I'll be back with you when I'm fitting the cutting part back on. So I've now cleaned the cutter part up um, the best I can really. I had to draw a line somewhere. It was just taking a long time and it's not bad at all. It's a lot better than it was. I've put that back on. So that is in place. That's the tension up for the belt. So what I'm going to do off camera is just place this on the other part of the saw and then I'll be back with you and we'll get the belt on. So I now have the cutter part back on. There's three studs which it goes through. Two you can't see behind there, but there's one there. And I had to turn that part there anti-clockwise to bring that back far enough to clear where it pushes against to adjust the belt so i'm ready to put the belt on now so it just goes through there i did check it isn't rotational it can go on either way i did look to see if it had an arrow on it but it doesn't so should be all good Front Get that on there and just check everything is in is in line. It's right there. We're just checking there, just behind there. 
It was just a little bit out, but I think it's due to me not pushing that in fully. So I think it'll be okay now. Yeah, that looks good. So now that's all in place, I'm gonna put this cover on. I'll do that off camera. It just goes on like that. And there's a bolt that goes in there. So everything looks good and in place now. So I'm gonna get the recoil on. So that just goes over the three studs. And then I'll get the nuts on. I haven't got to go fully tight with these just yet because I have to just turn that clockwise to adjust the belt. But I'll get these almost done up. So now I turn that tensioner nut clockwise until I can't turn it no more, which is there. So I just hold that while I nip these ones up. So they're fully tightened up now and the belt is tensioned right up where it should be. Uh, the only thing I have to do now is put the water pipe back on. It goes in there. I'll do that off camera. I have to just take the disc off to do that. I didn't realise. I thought it was a captive nut behind, but the nut dropped out. Um, so I'll just take the disc off and get that back on. And then that bolt's just underneath there, down underneath where the recoil is. It's easy enough um, how that goes. Uh, and then I'll see you outside. And then we'll go for start up. So now we have the saw outside, so I'm going to go for start up. So on this one, you primer there a few times to bring it up. Choke is all the way forward. Um is there, but I'm going to put it right the way back so it holds the throttle up a bit just to start up. So let's see if it goes. So everything's good. As you saw, it was a cold start, literally, there's snow on the ground. Um, and um, yeah, the saw is all good. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. The problem with it, I think, and you haven't seen that in this video because I did the Carbretta video separately, but I'll put a little clip in at the end what I think the problem was, why it wasn't running when I first got it. Um, yeah, it was a pretty simple thing, but I've been right over it as you've seen. So what have I done to it? I put a new recoil on it. That was about 15 pounds. It's a copy one, but I put the steel badge on it. So it looks better like that because the badge had come with it was just, just orange, had no writing in it. So we put that on. Uh, we put a service kit on it. The two filters, spark plug and the fuel filter, they were around about 13 pounds delivered. I put primer bulb on it. Just in there, you can just see it. I think that was about three to four pounds. So I've um, put a little bit into this. Oh, also as well, uh, that was missing when I got it. So I bought one of them, that was seven pounds delivered. And I think that was about it. So yeah, it's um, cost, cost a, uh, a few pounds, but still it's a very cheap saw. I bought this in a job lot of three and they cost me, I think 70 pounds for the three. So. Let's just say this owes me about £25 for the saw um, and then them other parts. So owes me a little bit over £60, something like that. So I'm really happy with it. Um, it did start well. It ran well, revs out well. So yeah, it's spot on. And the worst job was really cleaning it all down. Um, it was a bit of a nightmare. There was so much dust and, well, as you saw some of it, dust and little bits of concrete stuck on it. And yeah, it was a bit of a pain to clean down. But 
it's pretty decent now it's not too bad the plastic's dulled a bit uh, but i just got a little wire brush a small wire brush and got the worst of it off but i think that's acceptable you've got to draw the line somewhere um otherwise you'd be on it forever trying to get every bit off at the end of the day it's just a builder's work tool and yeah it's pretty tidy i think so um i'll just put the video in now of the carburetor fault and yeah and then i'll leave the video there so i'll finish now and I'll just put that bit in afterwards so thanks for watching and i'll be along with another video again soon so bye for now um and also we'll do this now we'll take the needle valve out and to me that does look a bit stuck in there so we'll do that and see what's what in there I did notice that the needle valve looked like it was sticking and what the problem was was that pin through there it is pushing through there a bit as you can see but that's pretty tight so what I'm going to do because the new kit comes with a new one and the pin I might as well just use that because that's really really free so we'll go with that